In this video, we're going to discuss static routes. I've been asked a number of times about static routes. Are you able, for example, to have multiple static routes configured on a router? Are you able to have multiple default routes configured on a router? Can you mix default routes and static routes? What's the effect of all of the above? In this example, we're gonna configure static routes on router one and test connectivity to the loopback of router five. We have router two, router three, and router four in the topology, and they configured with different subnets. Router two is configured with IP address 10.1.1.2 on this interface. Router three is configured with 10.1.2.2 on this interface. And router four is configured with 10.1.3.2 on this interface or link. So here's router one. What we're gonna test is connectivity to the loopback of router five. So from router one, is it able to ping the loopback of router five? So at the moment, when I ping the loopback of router five, we get timeouts. The router is not able to ping the loopback of router five. Show IP route shows us the routing table what you'll notice is that it only contains connected and local routes. There's no route to 5.5.5.5. Debug IP packet, as an example, will show us what happens when the router tries to ping that address. So I'm gonna ping 5.5.5.5 and repeat it once, and let's see what the output looks like. Notice unroutable. The router doesn't know where to route the packets. And again, that's because there's no route to the destination. There's also no gateway of last resort set on the router. So it has no way to get to this IP address. We could configure a route as follows. So an exact match on the route and point it to 10.1.1.2, which is router two. So show IP route now shows us that route in the routing table. So can the router now ping the loopback of router five? And the answer is yes, it can. I'm gonna disable IP domain lookup here to speed up trace route. So let's trace to the loopback of router five. Notice it's going via 10.1.1.2, which is router two, and then it gets to router five. What happens if I configure a static route like this and point it to router three? Which way will the traffic go? So let's have a look at the routing table. Show IP route shows us two entries in the routing table. There are two ways to get to the loopback of router five. So if I trace to that loopback, notice it's still going via router two. In other words, it's going to 10.1.1.2. And the reason for that is because this entry is more specific than this entry. Routers, when deciding where to route traffic, look at the longest match of a route. This route is a 32-bit match. This is a 24-bit match. So the traffic's gonna go via 10.1.1.2, and we can prove that by doing a trace route. If we remove this route from the routing table, and then do a trace again, notice the trace route is going via 10.1.2.2, but that's because we only have this route in the routing table. If we created another static route like this via router four, which way would the traffic go? So show IP route shows us the two entries. We've got a slash 16 and a slash 24. So when we trace to router five, notice it's going via router three because this is a longer match. That 
is a longer match than this, so router 3 is preferred rather than router 4. But again, if we removed that route from the routing table, so I'm going to remove this entry, so remove the static route. Now when we look at the routing table, we only have this entry, so traffic will go via 10132. In other words, it's going to go via router 4. If I add a more specific route of, let's say, slash 24, going via router 3 again, notice the traffic goes via router 3. And if I use a more specific route such as this, going via router 2 rather, notice the traffic goes via router 2. Show IP route shows us those routes. A slash 28 route is more specific than a slash 24 route, which is more specific than a slash 16 route. So remember with static routes, and this applies to other routing protocols as well, more specific matches win. So what happens if we add a route like this? Same mask as router 2, but configure it to go to router 3. So show IP route, notice the difference in the routing table now. We've got two entries for the same route. So when we trace to the loopback now, notice it's doing load balancing. Traffic is load balancing across both paths. And that's because we've got two equal entries in the routing table. So show run, pipe include route, these two routes are going to be used for load balancing because they're the most specific and they're the same length. These two will be ignored. But if we copy that and add an entry going to 10.1.3.2 to router 4, the routing table shows us three entries now. And if we trace to the loopback now, Notice it's going to load balance across those three routes. You need to be careful with this because sometimes, depending on the router, the load balancing may actually not be true. But for CCNA level, we'll assume that it load balances as follows. So, show run pipe include route. Things to remember, more specific entries win. If there are multiple entries with the same route and same mask, such as these three, the router will load balance across those paths equally. So in other words, equal cost load balancing or load sharing. I hope you enjoyed this video. If it was of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.